welcome you to our worship service this morning from Gordon Street Christian Church. We hope that you are doing well on this good Lord's Day. We thank you for worshiping with us, and we're grateful to our God who is able to unite us through the power of his Holy Spirit. May our hearts be blessed in his presence. At this time, we will begin our worship. Our call to worship is from the Psalms, the 13th Psalm, verses 5 and 6. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Our hymn of praise is hymn number 722. This is my song. Would you bow with me for the invocation and then join me praying the Lord's Prayer? Lord, sometimes we are distressed and you seem far from us. Help us remember your steadfast love and that your salvation will not fail. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is from Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. 
he said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. And then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, father. And he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do you not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him? For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord Will Provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we gather in worship of you, we remember all the good things that you have given to us. You have shown us your love through our Lord Jesus Christ, a love that was greater than any that our minds could ever imagine. You have shown us the power that you have in creating all things, the wisdom that you have in putting things together so that everything works together and supports one another. You have shown us your creativity in such a dazzling array of beauty and diversity that we see all around us. We give you thanks for all the blessings you have shown us. We thank you for the blessing of living in a place where we have freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of all kinds that many in our world have never had the opportunity to experience. We come before you asking forgiveness of our sins, for we have sinned against you time and time again. Strengthen us against temptation and help us that we might live in accordance with your will. May your love so grow within us that we cannot help but share it with others so that others around us might recognize your presence with us and in us and be drawn unto you to give you honor and glory. We pray this day for those who are having surgery. We pray for those whose 
health is, is very poor at the present time. We pray that your presence will be with them, that you will guide the surgeons, that you will bless those who are having surgery with a successful surgery and a speedy recovery. Bless those who are enduring illnesses with your strength, with the peace that passes all understanding, with joy that cannot be taken from them, and in accordance with your will, your healing touch upon their physical bodies. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. May your loving kindness surround them and comfort them and help us that we might be used of you as instruments of love and comfort as well. Bless us as we read your holy word. Give us insight and understanding. Guide us into serving you better. We pray for your church here and everywhere that we might be faithful in sharing your love and the good news of your salvation with all people. May those who live in darkness see your light and be drawn unto you and find life in your name. We pray for our nation and give you thanks for all these years of independence and freedom. Help us that we might live up to our ideals so that freedom might, might abound more and more for all people. We pray for all nations upon the face of the earth, that they too will know your blessings, that they too will, will acknowledge your goodness, that they too will recognize that all of us are beloved by you, that all of us are part of one great human family. And now, Lord, be with us. Search all of our hearts and minds and fulfill our deepest needs in accordance with your will. Help us that we might hear and understand your word and your will for our lives. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus, our risen and exalted Lord. Amen. Our second lesson from the scripture comes from the psalm, Psalm 13. Listen for the word of the Lord. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep the sleep of death and my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Here ends the readings from God's holy word. May he add his blessings to our understanding of it. Let us pray. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our Redeemer and our strength. Amen. You know, relationships are very important. In the very beginning, when God created man upon the face of the earth, you remember in that creation story, he had created Adam and he said, it is not good for a man to be alone. 
And so then he created Eve to be with Adam. And it began a blessing that has continued throughout all of human history. Relationships are important. But relationships also can be complicated as everyone here and everyone throughout history has known. Our primary most important relationship of all is the relationship that we have with our Creator. He created us for Himself. He created us and loved us with a love that is beyond description. What Jesus did for us on the cross and beyond is the greatest description that we can give. There is no greater uh, description than that of a love as powerful and more powerful than our minds can even imagine. But relationships are often complicated, even that relationship with God. In our first lesson from the scripture this morning, we have a story, another story about Abraham, concerning Abraham at least. In the last several weeks, we have spoken of Abraham a number of times from Genesis, the story of Abraham, and from Romans, Paul's reference back to Abraham concerning his faith. By the time of our story about Abraham this morning, Abraham and Sarah had received the promised child that God had promised to them many years before. You remember the story. You remember how God said that you and Sarah will have a son and through him, my people will be named, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. You will become the father of many nations. And this was to happen through their son Isaac. Well, you remember too that they had waited for that promise for years and years and years, and in spite of the years, it seems that Abraham's trust in God had not been shaken. It came to the point that Sarah was past childbearing years, and according to Paul, Abraham was as good as dead. He was old. Well, miracle of miracles, the promised son was born. Sarah was 90. Abraham was about a hundred. It seemed that it was impossible that a child could be born to them, but with God all things shall be possible. And God had fulfilled his promise. And so now they had joy upon joy, that long wait, that long trial of a faith resulted in abundance of joy. But by the time of our text this morning, that joy turns to anguish. This is a story that's not easy for us in this, in this day and time to read. We cannot imagine such a thing happening. We cannot imagine God requiring this of Abraham. We cannot imagine Abraham having the kind of faith in God, trust in God, that he would be willing to do such a horrible thing as sacrifice his son Isaac. But according to the text, God told Abraham to get up and to take Isaac to a place that he would tell him, build an altar and sacrifice him upon that altar. We are not told in the scripture whether Abraham protested or not. 
We are not told about Abraham's feelings concerning this, but we can infer from the scripture that Abraham was in turmoil, that he was in anguish over this requirement from God. You may recall that he had another son, Ishmael, by Sarah's handmaiden, Hagar. And the time came when Sarah required Abraham to send Hagar and her son away. And God told Abraham, yes, that's best, send send them away. And it grieved Abraham that he had to do that with his son and with Hagar. But he did it. And so we cannot even begin to imagine the sorrow and the anguish and the conflicting emotions that he had when God spoke to him of this horrible thing of going to kill his own son and offer him as a sacrifice. Now before we criticize Abraham too much for doing that, remember that our society sacrifices our children for things much less than God. We sacrifice our children for the sake of the Second Amendment, for the sake of national defense, for the sake of this or that. And we consider those things necessary. Well, how much more necessary is it for us to be obedient to the one who made us, to the one who gives us life and breath, and the one who can give us life that endures forever. Well, Abraham did not lose his trust in God in spite of all of this. Remember that the text was not really wanting to bring up so much about what a terrible thing such a sacrifice would be as it did, it wanted to express a faith, a trust that Abraham had, which was beyond what most people had. But in our day and time, it also brings up questions about God. Why would God ask such a thing? Why would God require such a horrible thing or even suggest it? Because in our, what we believe about God... God knows all things already. He knew that Abraham would do what he asked him to. So why did he ask him? Why did he put him through that? Well, there are things that you and I cannot answer. There are things that we just have to let them be as they are. But Abraham trusted God. Now, going to our text from the Psalms, from Psalm 13, we find that the psalmist also was having complications with his relationship with God. How long, O Lord? Will you forget me forever? How long? Will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Here was someone in anguish, and we're not told the exact details of what was going on in his life. But he was experiencing one of those times that I expect nearly everyone experiences at one time or another when it seemed that God was silent, when it seemed that his prayers were going unanswered, when it seemed that God was far away from him and not paying attention to anything that he was going through. Why am I going through this? Lord, why... Are you so far from helping me? The psalmist was very honest with God about his feelings, about what he thought about God. He was honest in saying, 
Why are you waiting so long to come help me? Why are you not taking my side against my enemies? If you keep waiting, I will perish. It will be too late. Come and rescue me before it is too late. And think about it. If Isaac knew what his father was about to do to him as he went with him with wood and fire and and a knife up to Mount Moriah, if Isaac had known, he probably would have cried out to God, come and rescue me before it's too late, before I die and nothing can be done then. And we know from the story in Genesis that at the last moment, God did come and rescue Isaac. He rescued Isaac from death and he blessed Abraham and reaffirmed the covenant that he had made with Abraham. Surely you will be blessed. You will be the father of a multitude of people and through your descendants all the nations of the earth will be blessed. The covenant was reassured to Abraham. He had trusted God even in the most difficult of moments. And I don't know if the psalmist, when he was writing this psalm and making his complaint to God that I am in this mess and it seems that you're not coming to help me, it seems you're not listening to my pleas, And maybe he thought about that story of Abraham who in the most anguishing moment of his life found that God rescued, came to the rescue at the right time before it was too late. Here the psalmist says, Give light to my eyes or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemies will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. If you don't come and help me soon, it will be too late. Maybe he thought about Abraham. Maybe he thought about Isaac. Maybe he remembered how God came at the right time and rescued Isaac. And then his trust comes to the surface again. I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. It doesn't say that all of a sudden all his problems are gone. They're still there. It doesn't say that his enemies are gone. They're still there. But now he knows. He remembers his trust in God. He remembers that God had always dealt bountifully with him. As he looked back over his life through all the hardships and struggles and pains, through all the good times, through all of it, God had dealt bountifully with him. And remembering that, he put his trust in God again. You and I, Probably every person living has gone through times of struggle, times of difficulty, times when they th- we thought that if God doesn't rescue us, it's going to be too late. And we cried out to God, and it seemed that our cries were falling on deaf ears. It seemed that God was far away somewhere and not coming to our rescue. It seemed that he was not even noticing what was happening to us. But today, if you look back over your life honestly, if you see those times of struggle and pain, those times of heartache and grief, you'll see that not everything worked out the way you wanted it to. But you will also see that God had not abandoned you, that he has never abandoned any of us, that he was watching over us and working to bring out the best from everything. 
That is the love and the power of our God. He's always on time. He knows what is best. He knows what is right. And He will do it. And so the psalmist says, He's always dealt bountifully with me. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. So in the midst of his troubles, all of a sudden he was reassured that God had not forsaken him. And God would bring him in the end to a salvation that was greater than his mind could even imagine at that time. Trust in God. Abraham had that kind of trust in God. Isaac had a, an experience that would go with him for the rest of his life that in fact God had rescued him at the right time that God was able to do what we cannot do for ourselves. And so in the midst of a world of uncertainty, in the midst of uncertainties in our own lives, in the midst of struggles with relationships, struggles with our relationship with God, with questions in our mind, why God would do the things that he does or why God would refrain from acting when he doesn't seem to be acting. May we remember how God has always fulfilled his promises. How God has never really forsaken us. How God has given to us through his son Jesus Christ the gift of life that nothing can take from us. And may our trust in God be so renewed that we will know that in spite of the circumstances around us, we will know the joy and the power of God's salvation. Thanks be to God.
we come to the Lord's table, we are reminded of why we should have trust in our God. Because at this table, we remember the greatest act of love that ever happened. In Christ Jesus, who has shown us the love of God, he was willing to suffer on a cross, excruciating pain, willing even to face death for us, even though he had the power to save himself from us, rather than harm any of us. He accepted our violence. He accepted the pain. He accepted the death that we had condemned him to. And yet, his love was not defeated because from the cross he forgave us. In resurrection he came to us with love and forgiveness and he invites us now, in spite of our sins and our unworthiness, to come to his table and to come as his children, as members of his family, citizens of his kingdom. This bread reminds us of his body given for us. This cup reminds us of his blood shed for us. And so when it seems to us that God is far away when he's not answering our prayers, when it seems to us that he's not going to rescue us in time, may we remember that his love never fails. And if it didn't fail while he was in excruciating pain on a cross, it's not going to fail when we are in our situations of crisis. God still loves us. God knows what's best. God may not rescue us from a particular circumstance. We may have to endure it, but he will give us the power to endure and we can trust that we will see the salvation of our God and will know peace and joy beyond description. So at this table, we celebrate and give thanks for the living presence of our Lord who loved us with his very life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, at this table, we give you thanks for our Lord Jesus Christ who showed us how strong his love, your love, really are. At this table, we ask forgiveness of our sins because it was our sins that caused him to go to a cross and suffer. At this table, we thank you that in spite of what we have done, you have still loved us and offered us salvation. As we partake of this bread and this cup, may our faith be strengthened. May our spirits be nourished and our bodies be nourished that we might serve you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we recall, on the same night that the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in a like manner after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had blessed it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Drink you this and remember that Christ died for you, 
and be thankful. Let us pray. Lord, though we were not worthy, you have received us and continued to love us. You have blessed us with rich food given to us at the cost of your own life. You have surrounded us with your Holy Spirit and have worked miracles in our lives through that Spirit. We thank you and praise you. Help us that we might walk in your footsteps. Help us that we might do your will. Help us that we will be examples for others, that they too might find the love that is greater than any other through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the Lord our Maker, be all honor and glory, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.